In this video, we discuss seven common money mistakes made the first year of retirement. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people are presented with stories of how to gain untold riches with modest amounts of income. This is usually in conjunction with a complete absence of discussion of the risk that they could lose some or all of their money. Turn $3,500 into $17,000, one would say. Now, while this is surely a scam, many people fall for it. There are other investments that are actually quite legitimate if you are a trained investor, or to be candid, more likely a, a trained speculator than a trained investor. These are things like commodity futures, penny stocks, cryptocurrency, the list goes on and on. Normally when I hear of someone who doesn't know about these assets, at least doesn't have years of studying them, but yet has invested in them, the provider of capital has been presented with only part of the story, but it sounds logical, so therefore they must know the whole thing. At least that's what they think. The investor has been presented with only part of the story, so they believe that they understand the risk, but they really don't. Most of these types of financial vehicles, the skill necessary to invest in them goes far beyond even the most competent financial advisor. Yet the mark repeats back the words that they've heard because those make sense. For example, it's one thing to know that commodity prices go up in a drought. It's another altogether to know when to buy and sell in a drought. The next mistake is forgetting to plan for taxes in year one of retirement. Let me explain. When everything changes and your employer is no longer taking taxes out of your paycheck and you're now relying on your retirement investments, many people don't fully understand how much they need to set aside for federal and state income taxes, at least their first year of retirement. Case in point, most distributions from 401ks, from pensions, and even social security are probably going to be taxed. Yet those sums of money arrive without any tax taken out from them whatsoever. This usually becomes a problem on or around the first week of April when the retiree realizes as they're getting their taxes ready to go that they owe Uncle Sam quite a bit more than they thought they would. The next point is having a basic retirement budget. Many people over the course of decades have been able to figure out what their monthly budget should be because they essentially have had the same bills during their entire working life. But in retirement, there are a lot of unknown expenses, particularly in year one, as one works out the kinks. This is why it's really important to have at least a basic financial budget as you determine where you're going to spend your funds. And frankly, there are a lot of software programs out there that help with this, but in my opinion, they are more suited for someone who's looking at their overall financial picture than just working on their budget. This is why I created a free Excel retirement budget template. You can find it at holyschmidt.com forward slash budget. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how to use the Excel template, I'll put a link at the end of this video to another YouTube video I created about three weeks ago, which outlines how to use the free download. The next point is living large your first couple of years of retirement. Now, when people enter retirement, they have their most energy during the first few years of retirement and gradually that wanes over time. And they know this. So as a consequence, they front load some of the things, often front load some of the things that they spend money on, like travel, for example. And this tends to make the overall financial picture of the retiree a little less stable if done improperly. And while your pre-retirement work obligations have ended, some of your other pre-retirement obligations may not have ended, including helping adult children get on their feet or being overly generous with gift giving during the holidays. It's important to reduce or even eliminate these obligations as soon as possible because they will be a draw on your retirement savings. The next point is putting off basic but important financial decisions. Most people think the most important financial decision is to save early and save often. And frankly, there's a lot of truth to that. But there are many very real and important financial decisions that you can make later in life, but the clock is ticking, and it's important to get those completed as soon as you can, while you still have time. Case in point, if you don't structure your financial affairs correctly, 
and you pass suddenly, unexpectedly, your heirs could face years of financial issues. Let me explain. This one comes from my good friend Lane Martinson, whose channel Financial Fast Lane is one of the best in this niche. Lane put out a YouTube short recently talking about Prince and how his $156 million estate passed with no will and no other estate planning documents. And that caused six years of probate and millions of dollars of legal fees. And it all could have been avoided if Prince had spent a few hours with an estate planning attorney. I'll put a link to Lane's video in the description so you can see what he has to say yourself. Along the same lines, and one we talk about a lot on this channel is taking social security at the wrong time. If you talk to folks on this channel, many of them will say, I'm not taking social security until age 70 because I want the largest payment. Others will take it at age 62 because they say there is no promise of tomorrow in life. Both statements are correct, of course, but there are a myriad of facts that go into making that decision, yet most people simply do what a family member or a friend does. Of course, looking at what others have done is not the best way to make the decision for your individual situation. Next is not having a plan B as they relate to major life events. Let me explain. For those of you who are movie buffs, you might remember the 1983 movie War Games, starring Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy. In the movie, a U.S. supercomputer runs thousands of simulations on how to engage the then Soviet Union in a nuclear war with the U.S. coming out on top, but to no avail. In real life, however, we don't generally have thousands of options, even hundreds or even dozens of options in front of us when we are faced with some of life's challenges. We may not even have a second option. However, today, while you still have your options in front of you, it's best to start wargaming, so to speak, and at least create one or two plan Bs for every life situation that you're really worried about. Examples might include what to do if you lose your job, for those of you who are still working. The answer, by the way, might include something as simple as building a nest egg or as complex as building additional skills so that if you lose your job at your current company, the competition will pick you up pretty quickly. Another might be thinking about anticipated health issues based on your family history, and the plan B might include taking out a long-term care policy, saving more today, or simply joining a health club. I'm sure you have several that you're fearful of. Jot those down now and potential solutions, and most importantly, follow through. Next, entering retirement with credit card debt. Credit card debt is the fast food of debt, so to speak. It feels oh so good when you're using your credit card, but it catches up with you very, very quickly. The biggest problem with credit card debt is that you don't feel it, much like you don't feel the Big Mac when you only eat one, but if you consume more and more credit card debt over time, it catches up with you very quickly. So you need to get credit card debt away from you pronto. A few years ago, my college-aged daughter was home from school and she went to the mall to one of the really nice cosmetic stores in the mall. She had gone to pick up foundation and came back with a few bags full of cosmetics. When I asked her what happened, because I thought she was just going to pick up one particular item, she said they were offering 20% off if I would take out a credit card. At that point in time, I had what's called a matrix moment. You know what I'm talking about from the movie, The Matrix, where everything slows way down and you are keenly focused on the one thing that can hurt you. I suddenly heard everything she said, and more importantly, what she didn't say with complete clarity and focus. What's the APR on the credit card, I asked. She replied with, I don't know, but I can pay it off when it arrives and avoid paying any interest charges whatsoever. I filed the conversation in the back of my head for two weeks from that point in time to revisit the issue. Fast forward a few weeks later, she was back at school and her credit card bill arrived. I asked her if I could open it, she said yes, and we discussed what it contained. Now, as a college student, she didn't have any consistent source of income, so her only real option was to pay it out over time. I read the card information and the card contained an APR of 31.99%. At that time, I thought two things. One, 
why would a retail store give someone without any source of income whatsoever a credit card? And two, why would that person who has no source of income take out a credit card? Still, the one thing that shocked me most was the 31.99% interest charge. I said to my daughter, I'll pay this off for you and you pay me back and I'll charge you the very reasonable rate of zero interest over the course of the next three to six months. We then got into a conversation of the 31.99% APR and I also talked about what a good, if you could call it that, APR is on a credit card, 12 to 15% if you have an excellent credit score and you have the right credit card. She was shocked to know that she was paying over double or she would have been paying over double what others would be paying for a credit card. Ladies and gentlemen, credit card debt is dangerous because it's so easy just to pay the minimum and it's only a few dollars until it's not. The few dollar payments start to snowball and all of a sudden you have a real financial obligation on your hands that you didn't have before and it is a drain on your retirement cash flow. So pay it off as soon as you can. If you like this video, check out last week's video, seven things a retiree should never disclose. Also, as a reminder, check out that video on how to use my free Excel retirement budget download. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.